to cover so obviously you see the riverbend aquarium behind me and uh, you can see it's up and running and last time you saw it it was a uh, marine uh, reef aquarium <laughs> so uh, as you can imagine there's a lot of change for that in this in this video we're going to show you know how I broke it down cleaned it up and reset it as fresh water and what you're going to see in the video too or more hear me say during the video is how I keep going back and forth on what I'm going to keep in it because I had an idea well I had a plan for the fish I wanted to keep and then I built a scape, which I thought would work for it, and I was gonna bring in certain plants for the 3,000 gallon, and then I realized uh, <laughs> my mental vision and the real thing don't match up at all. Those mother plants of the 3,000 gallon, they're three feet wide, three feet tall, they can't go in there. I, I think I said I was gonna put two of them in there, that's crazy, that's not gonna happen. And then I made a scape, that I love the scape, but it's not the right scape for the fish I wanted to keep. So if you see those uh, measuring tapes on the floor behind me, yeah, that's right. I'm going to have to build another custom aquarium to keep the, the fish I was originally going to keep in the 150. And now, of course, i got to figure out what I want to keep with the scape that I fell in love with. But uh, you'll, you'll see in the video. Plus, we'll touch on uh, the work going on the 3,000 gallon and some craziness with the 125. Uh, a leak that just, well, I'll tell you. You'll see it. That's at the end. We'll cover that stuff at the end. All right, let's jump into uh, tearing this thing down and building it back up. All right, these are always exciting times when you get to set up a new tank and we're gonna be setting up the uh, New World Cichlid, the combination Central South American 150 gallon cube. Uh, I wanna say uh, thanks to everyone who commented on last week's video. As you noticed, there's a week delay in my reply. I was on vacation uh, up in the mountains, hiking, trying to keep bears from climbing on my truck, all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, sort of unplugged off grid for a little bit for a week. So appreciate the comments and I will get back to you. And definitely a shout out to my buddy Gary for looking after the fish basement for me. Everything's exactly how I left it and that's the most you can hope for. When you have to leave your uh, fish basement alone for a week, it's just great to come back and see everything's just like you left it. Okay, but this video is not about me. It is about revamping the 150 gallon, what used to be the Low Tech Reef Cube. Uh, and now is going to be a New World Cichlid Aquarium. You know, one of my favorites. You know, I'm a sucker for all kinds of cichlids and another cichlid tank. So, uh, what are we going to do first? First, we are going to get off this coralline algae, this calcium based coralline algae. Uh, from when this was salt water, uh, we're going to remove more of this substrate, you know, almost all the substrate, and uh, we're going to get all this other substrate out from the refugium. So step one is going to be me removing this stuff, and then step two is going to be a little bit of apple cider vinegar and a sponge and get off uh, all that uh, encrusted coralline algae. So let me get to work on that, and then we'll pop back in and uh, see where we're at. Okay, so this is uh, more or less stage one complete. Uh, I cleared off, scraped off most of the uh, coralline algae that I could get uh, reasonably. Still some on the back, but that's going to break down. Um, it did break down a lot. I, I ran the tank with uh, vinegar water uh, for 24 hours, drained all that out, uh, cleaned out the rest of the substrate. Uh, I have two big buckets of good salt water uh, refugium mud over there now. Uh, and replace that with the lava rock. So what used to be a refugium is now going to be a bog filter. So the lava rock is at the bottom, the water is going to drain out through those holes, and then it's going to be covered in plants, bog plants, growing terrestrially out of the water, uh, fed by the lights up above. Uh, as far as the tank up, up, up top, sorry about the uh, water coming in. Uh, so as you see, I'm filling it up right now. And what I'm going to do is just run the system for another day, day, a couple days, um, get you know, get it all the way filled up, draining over into the sump, and just let the system run, get the uh, power head back on. Um, again, let some more of that calcareous uh, algae uh, come off of there. Do a little more cleaning, do a big draining again, and then I'm going to come back and uh, start the actual scape and start trying to keep actual proper water parameters. So. I'm going to let this fill up, uh, we're going to let it circulate, uh, then we'll come back and we'll get started with the, uh, the actual scaping and setting up the uh, bulk filter. Okay, finally the boring part is almost over on the 150 rebuild. So what do we have to do here? We're converting from uh, salt water to fresh water, so we had to get out all that old salt water, that marine substrate, the crushed coral from down below, the sand from up top, 
and all that coralline algae that was encrusted, that calcium-based algae encrusted everywhere. So uh, we did a lot of scraping. So a lot of, a lot of uh, vinegar and a sponge to loosen it up. And then of course a razor blade, which uh, doesn't like that salt water, does it? <laughs> uh, to scrape it off, to get where we are now. Um, and I should say, to get where we are now, we filled this up three times with vinegar water. So I put a gallon of vinegar and then uh, it's probably about 180 gallons of water or so here. And I just let it run for 24 hours with all the pumps going, the power heads are going, the circulation pump, the water's overflowing down. Cause you know, we have calcium based coralline algae everywhere. So we want that vinegar, we want that higher pH water to get everywhere. We want it to get down into the, the sump and we want to clear all that out. And you know it's working, so uh, I can't show on video, but you could smell the die off the first few days if you just put your nose up there. But you can see the die off right there. See all that nasty foam? That is breakdown. That's what it looks like. Now normally you don't see that in freshwater. Uh, that's called foam practitioning or protein skimming. And it doesn't usually work in freshwater very well. Uh, because it requires the denser water of a uh, salt water to uh, support uh, lifting the protein to the surface like that when it's uh, oxygenated. But we have so much die off, it, it, it pretty much shows you how much die off you have when you're converting over a tank that you can actually produce that amount of froth in uh, fresh water. And this is, this is the third time around. The first time around, you know, it was covering a good chunk of that space and then the second time less and now we're down to the end here so we're getting pretty close so i feel pretty good about going ahead and, and draining the water now shutting everything down and starting the hardscape um, but before we do do that let me just give you a quick look down here uh, into the sump so this is going to be our our bog filter you see we're bringing the water down we're draining it down and then we're dispersing it using these perforated pipes just PVC pipes that I've drilled holes in and cut slits in to spread the water out. So we're bringing highly oxygenated water, also water that has uh, nutrients in it, right? The breakdown from fish and waste and fish food and everything. We're bringing that, that plus the oxygen down here into the sump and uh, right into those lava rocks. So that lava rock is gonna be our big uh, bacteria bed. And then on top of it are gonna be bog plants. They're going to be plants where the roots are hanging down in the water right in all that highly oxygenated, nutritious water that's being brought down from the main display where they are going to happily eat away all those nutrients. And the key here is that they are accessing terrestrial CO2. These plants are going to be growing up out of the water with only the roots down in the water and using the lava rock to, you know, to attach their root structure to, but mostly just, just floating and growing out of the water so they have access to unlimited CO2. So you know, if you have a, an aquarium and you change the water and you see all the purling from your plants, it's because you've introduced a whole bunch of uh, fresh CO2 in the water and they're using that. And during that process, they're, they're upticking uh, nutrients from the water. And that's all great, but unless you're injecting CO2 into the aquarium or uh, doing lots and lots of water changes, that process is not going to be efficient enough to get the job done. So that's why we're going bog style so we can tap into all this wonderful CO2 in the air all around us. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and get this drained out and uh, we'll get started on the, the hardscape. Now the fun part's getting started. Okay, finally on to the fun part. I can see we're all pumped out, we're all ready to go for hardscape. So uh, what are we looking at for hardscape? Well, I got a bunch of uh, rock here. I think it's like a Seco Ciro stone, something like that. Uh, basically a, a gray rock. Um, some uh, wood root. Of course, some uh, painted and perforated PVC pipe. Uh, and some different types of uh, rocks. Some smaller rocks, some medium-sized rocks, a whole bunch of play sand, and A bunch more lava rock that's all been cleaned off out here in the wheelbarrow to create, uh, to build up structure around the PVC pipe and create elevation in the tank. Okay, so what's the process, what's the thought process with the tank here? So we know it's going to be a combination of uh, South and Central American cichlids and complementing fish. Uh, and I can tell you now that the, the tank, well, you've probably already seen it on the <laughs> thumbnail, it's going to be river bend. So it's a cube. And what we're going to do is you're going to have to imagine 
we've got a river that's coming this way and then going that way and we're going to create a bend in the river so we're going to build up somewhere off of the uh, we're going to come off the front maybe 10 inches or so uh, before i actually before i go into that this is a 150 gallon cube so it's uh it's three feet this way side to side it's three feet front to back and it's 27 inches tall so we're going to come back say roughly 10 inches or so and then we're going to build out an embankment and we're going to curve the embankment back we're going to follow that around and then we're going to go over here and then we're going to cut it back you know maybe eight inches off the glass over there and then we're going to build that structure up so we want to create some height in the aquarium so along that embankment we're going to build that up with hardscape and then we're going to be planning up on top of it so that should give us a real nice uh elevated significant backdrop and then somewhere in the middle we're going to create sort of an island effect uh we're gonna have another little cave some rock and wood again we're going to build that up and we're going to plan on top of that as well so we'll get uh caves going in and out of our embankment we'll have our embankment wrapping around and then out here in the middle we'll have a uh, island that'll create area for the fish to go around so uh that is the plan and uh now i got uh, some work to do so just in case uh, this is your first aquarium video, yes, I do deep sand beds. <laughs> yes, I believe in denitrification. And uh, yes, uh, if it's good enough for nature, it's good enough for me. So let's see, what have we got? This is our foundation. We've got a nice three inches of uh, sand in the bottom of the aquarium. So this is uh, giving us a, a deep enough uh, substrate bed, uh, both for uh, to give us lots of area on the surface for bacteria to grow, aerobic bacteria, and it's deep enough for anaerobic bacteria to grow a little ways down, a little underneath that uh, surface and give us that uh, breakdown, that, that anaerobic breakdown of nitrate in an area with less oxygen, no UV, but still exposed to the water column. So that's, uh, that's the, the, you know, the five cent tour of why you do a deep substrate sand bed, or, uh, I like sand the best because so here's the thing is if you use a gravel like this this stuff here so the problem with that uh, is that you get all kinds of uh, de decaying material and plant matter down in so real quick I just thought this would be a good time just to say why I use sand for the deep sub substrate sand or uh, yeah substrate and why I think that's so important uh, compared to using something like pea gravel or something like that. Uh, so the reason I use the sand is because it's very hard for physical particles, leftover foods or, or, uh, or uh, organic material like plant leaves and everything to really get down in the sand. It kind of sits on top of it, which is where you want it because uh, then it's doing what you want it to do. You want it to break down there with the aerobic bacteria and you want it to be exposed to the anaerobic bacteria right underneath that surface. Uh, the reason I wouldn't use something like pea gravel or really large uh, rocks or things like that is because then the the material gets down in all those cracks uh, and it's not really exposed to that highly oxygenated aerated water column that's going right over the surface uh, then you tend to get more uh, uh, more breakdown more nutrient breakdown that's not getting fully processed it's just polluting the water with uh, more nitrate and phosphate uh, typically if you look in nature where you, where you have a, a substrate like that where you have a lot of rocks and everything those tend to be uh, more fast flowing uh, waterways rivers things like that um, mountain streams you know so yes there that's you have those big cavities but you have water rushing through there uh, so that takes those things away uh, areas where you tend to see slower moving water you tend to see more of a, a dense either mud or sand substrate uh, and, it, and it works a lot better that way so again just uh, mimicking nature here uh, pr providing the building blocks for nature to do its job uh, with this aquarium all right, so now that we discuss why we go with sand and why we have three inches of sand, we have our base. Now it is time to start fitting our plumbing pieces, which are gonna create our caves in the, river, the embankment area. Then we're gonna start fitting stones around them. We're gonna start using lava rock to fill the cavities around them. Uh, then we're gonna fill in sand uh, in the embankment uh, to give, and, <clears throat> to give you know to fill it in between you know the, the the PVC pipe and the lava rock and then we'll start fitting uh, smaller rocks and all of our wood and these kind of rocks over here uh, to finish off the embankment and the island and then we'll use the smaller rocks uh, down there just for yeah to sort of even out so we don't want to go straight from big rock to sand we'll use those 
smaller rocks and medium rocks over there to sort of create that nice transition, you know, from the uh, the rocky embankment and the uh, the rock and wood embankment and the island to the sand bed. Okay, this is the fun part. Okay, obviously we're at the uh, sort of the midway point here, the hardscape. Uh, forgive my mess here in the front with the woods, just sitting there. But I want to give you a quick uh, view of what we got going on here. So uh, you can see we've, uh, we've got the, t uh, the caves in there and uh, we have the river bend. Let me take you up top here. So this is the, the bend in the river. So you can imagine them get the op more open space out here. So you can sort of imagine the river's flowing like this. Uh, you see that we've got uh, a cave in the front and then a cave on the side and then here, here, and then on the side over there. Let me, uh, let me take you around. So sorry, the uh, glass a little bit of a mess, but uh, obviously we have a little work to do to hide the pipes, but uh, to get it that well hidden with rocks is pretty good because uh, we use wood for the rest of it. That's uh, easier to get in there. Um, and I guess the other thing you can see is that we've built up the uh, substrate behind it and probably best to wheel you around to this side to see what we got going on here. So you see in there, there's the lava rock. That's all built up with lava rock in there and then topped off with the sand. And now I've pushed it in as much as I can, but as you can imagine, once I add some water, that's all gonna compress down there. And I'm gonna be doing that a few times. So let me show you the, the first time. I'm gonna pour some water in there. We'll see how much it compresses down. And then of course, I'll keep adding more sand and more water uh, until we get the, you know, get it all fully saturated and built up. So. Let's take some water here and, uh, whoops, <laughs> let's see how good it works. All right. That's not bad. It's not uh, totally collapsing or anything like that, so that's a good sign. All right, let's get over here. Okay, yeah, really not bad at all. You can see uh, we got it we got it uh, built up here pretty good to start with. That's not a lot of collapsing. And then over here where you do see more of the sand collapsing in, that is the desired result. I mean, that's the whole point is to uh, work it down in there. You really can't do that with your fingers really effectively, so you let water do it. So yeah, for a first pass there, really not bad at all. So uh, yeah, let me go ahead and Start adding, you know, more sand to that uh, and get that all done. And then, of course, we've got all kinds of, uh, you know, rock here to trim out, uh, you know, um, well, to, to basically sort of blend in uh, so we don't have just such a sheer cliff, you know. But also, um, we have the gravel. So if there are any little places where it's hard to get the sand, because, you know, sand's so fine. If you've got any little crack at all, we'll fill that up with the, uh, the gravel there. So... It'll all be taken care of. Okay, let me, uh, let me get back to uh, compacting this uh, riverbend embankment. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, put some of the wood in there. Let me, uh, let's go up above here. I think it's probably a better view. Let's move uh, the, those out of the way for a minute. Uh, so yeah, added wood to cover the, the cave opening so you don't see the black plastic from the caves. Just trying to make that more natural. And then, you know, we have the river bend in the open space, but we got a little bit of a cluster of a uh, hardscape out there just to give uh, something for the fish to go around, you know, something to pull them out so uh, they feel comfortable. Uh, that's a lot of sand. Well, what did we do? We probably went, uh, I don't know, 250? Yeah, one bag in reserve. So lots and lots of sand. Oh, and uh, yeah, it actually only took two more tries with the water and uh, it's all compacted in. So it worked out pretty well. There's always that risk of, uh, you know, the water or the sand, you know, all coming out somewhere. But uh, it actually uh, worked out pretty good with this, uh, I think it's Ciro stone. Uh, I, I, it's pretty common rock. Uh, it's either Ciro or Seiko or something like that, this gray stone. But uh, it worked pretty well for creating, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, like a relatively, you know, tall edge to aquascape again. So, you know, we're bringing... You know, we've got three inches here, and then we're bringing it up probably another eight or nine inches. So, you know, we're a foot up on an aquarium on a 27 inch. So 
when the uh, plants are up top, it should be pretty substantial looking. Um, but just another look over here at the, the cave entrance. And you add the wood in there and it mostly pretty much hides everything. Uh, let's, uh, excuse me, crunching on the sandbags. Come back over here and same sort of thing. Uh, you got the uh, caves all pretty covered. So we got one, two, three, four, five cave entrances. So pretty, pretty interesting scape, uh, I think. I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, I think it's going to pop because of the elevation. And uh, I think the, the interaction with the embankment, being able to go inside of it, and having some sort of structure out here to pull the fish out. Uh, also plenty of open swim room. I think it's going to work. And uh, you can see we've got the handy dandy aquarium co-op easy root tab. So why do we have these? Well, we have these because we have a sand substrate and we're going to be putting a root feeder in there, i.e. Amazon swords. In fact, we're going to be putting the Amazon swords from the 3000 gallon. The big mother plants I have are going in here. One over here and uh, one over there, which means I'm going to have to relocate that power head probably over here. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, some smaller plants out here. But for right now, we'll get those two big mother plants and they'll be the first ones to go in here. At any rate, uh, obviously we know there is sand and lava rock under there. So we're going to put some uh, root tabs down in there to give those uh, roots something to feed on uh, until the tank gets uh, well established and has uh, plenty of things breaking down in there, plenty of nutrients breaking down in, in that deep substrate for those roots to get onto. So we're going to put those easy tab or root tabs in there. And then I'm also going to take uh, more wood and more rock. I've got some of these larger river stones like up here. So I'll kind of trim out around the top, trim out along the bottom with those. We'll do some more wood root in the back to give it, you know, 3D, you know, front end all the way in the back, you know, leaving space in the middle. And then, uh, then we'll trim out with these smaller rocks, like down here, this gravel, this decorative gravel. And uh, yeah, we'll spread that around. So uh, we're gonna call this, what is this? Like uh, <laughs> uh, part three or four for the hardscape. I think the, the next time we see this, the hardscape will be done. And you know what? I'll clean off the glass so we can actually see it better. All right, there is our final hardscape. Uh, I might have gone a little overboard with the gravel there, but I think it will uh, it'll all blend in there. I think once the plants are in there, it'll, it'll make some sense. Or if it doesn't, I can always pour a little sand over it. No big deal. Um, I have a feeling a lot of it's going to get covered up by the sand anyways. But uh, so you see, we got the, the rock and the wood here in the island. It's a small little structure, nothing too substantial. Mostly uh, the, the main feature is the riverbank, but you can see we've got... Uh, a real nice mix of uh, sand and uh, wood. Uh, being a cube tank, you know, we got two really good views, you know, from this side and the front, uh, and then kind of an interesting view from over there. Uh, but that, that was the most logical wall to build up because the overflows back there. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with the, uh, the hardscape. It's one of those ones where it's, uh, it, you know, more or less came out like my mental picture uh, of how I was envisioning it. So uh, that's always nice because <laughs> there's definitely been times where uh, I've tried to put these scapes together and uh, once I get it in there, I'm like, yeah, the, the real thing doesn't match the, uh, <laughs> the, the mental picture at all. This one, in this case, it, uh, it actually does. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, so whether, you know, whether it's good or not, I don't know, but at least it matches the picture in my head. So that's a good start for me. So let's see here, uh, what's it missing? Water, yeah. Let's uh, let me get the hose in here, get this sucker filling up. I'll get that pump moved over, um, over here, which probably should work actually uh, for water movement because uh, we're gonna have a big plant right there in here. So we'll see about that. But uh, yeah, let me get the, the water in there, get it turned back on and uh, we'll get the glass even clearer and uh, get, the, get the water temperature get the water up to temp because uh, obviously I heat the basement so there's no heater in here so it'll take 24 hours or so uh, and then we can uh, start moving plants over then we should really have an idea uh, what this sucker's going to look like. So this is an interesting one. Uh, as you can see uh, the, the scape is in there and uh, it's come a long way and I was getting ready to go ahead and start putting the plants in here you know call the hardscape uh, complete. Well let me take you around. You see I took that wood off the back I figure once I get the plants up there, that's going to take care of that space. And to be honest with you, my problem, my conundrum here is that 
Apparently my eyes don't work really well because what I was thinking about keeping in here and the size of the tank with this scape is not going to work. And I, I kind of like the scape. I sort of, I built a scape that actually wasn't really right for the fish that I was thinking about keeping in here. But I just, I like the scape and I don't want to tear it down. So now I'm thinking I want to put fish in here that work with the scape. <laughs> so it's sort of the same thing with the wood in the back. I started looking at the size of the swords, the Amazon swords I'm going to transplant for 3,000 gallon. I'm like, what am I thinking? First of all, there's no way I was going to put those mother swords in here. They'd take up the entire tank. Even the smaller swords, there's no room for wood back there. It's going to be all plants up there. It's going to be plants down here. And then by the time I put all those plants in, I mean, even right now, it doesn't work with the fish I was originally thinking about. Uh, so I, I got to rethink what I'm going to keep in here. Um, as far as the bottom, that's that's fine. The plants will work down there. Everything's good down there, but yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna have to rethink the top here. Now, not all is lost on those fish I wanted to keep because I have a big empty space right here, and this is going to be the home of my 93 gallon cube. Uh, so, which I already have. It's just I need to paint the stand and set it back up. And this is the one. This 93 cube that's going to be here is actually going to be the cube where I do the prototype wetland style filter which will hopefully be what I do for future builds for the basement expansion, which will be over there. But for now, we have the 150 cube. And yeah, you know what? Let me go ahead and transplant over the swords from the 3000 gallon and get the wisteria in the bottom in the uh, bog filter. And then we'll revisit what we should be putting in here because I think once the plants are in there, it'll make sense that the the cichlids I was thinking about just won't really won't really fit that well. So, ah oh, man, but yeah, the, the caves—you got all these caves. And there, there's there's actually a cave right in here, sideways. And even if you and there's you know a cave there and here, and over on the side. And you see that one is back over there. Really worked out. The embankment really worked out well. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely got to find fish to match this because I, I like this. I, well, we'll see what it looks like with plants because that that definitely could change it quite a bit. Let's let's get those plants in here. Sometimes I wonder who's got the better life: dogs or sharks? Eat laying around. Oh man, I'm jealous. All right, let's focus on uh, the 150 riverbed. So as you can see. Uh, we, put, we have the tank finished off, still a little bit cloudy, you know, it hasn't been running for that long. It's going through the process of where I take water from my established aquariums and I put it into here uh, to help seed the environment uh, with uh, ammonia and everything for the bacteria. Of course, we moved over a whole bunch of plants and we can't forget that uh, we also moved over a whole bunch of uh, floating plants uh, from the 3,000 gallon uh, sump area they were using for our bog filter in the River Bend Aquarium. But uh, yeah, so I've been waffling back and forth all video. Uh, the, the plan originally was to keep the electric blue Jack Dempsey in here and some uh, uh, Acara, Threadfin Acara, but I made this scape that I really enjoy and I sort of overestimated the size of the tank, even though it is three feet by three feet. Uh, and then I just sort of decided that full grown, I don't think those fish will work in here. And uh, you know how I keep fish here at Aquarium Domain for the long haul. So I'm not putting a fish in a tank that he can't, that those fish can't live and thrive their whole life. And then of course, once I moved over some baby swords with 3000 gallon, you see these are babies and still, you know, there's just, when all that grows up, there's just not a ton of room for, you know, a whole bunch of eight inch fish. So. I gotta think of something else for this. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of fish that I would love to keep in here with this scape, but I really do wanna keep this scape, so that is the plan. Uh, while the tank is uh, cycling and getting ready is trying to figure out uh, exactly what I wanna keep in here. Uh, and of course, you know, any suggestions are much appreciated. I have a short list, but uh, I don't wanna give my list away because I don't wanna, I don't wanna limit it, you know? So if somebody comes up with a good idea that has nothing to do with what I'm thinking about, I wanna know about it. So anyway, I have some ideas, looking for other ones. And then of course, like I alluded to, yep. <laughs> I'm so originally the 93 gallon was gonna go here and I was gonna build my first prototype bog filter behind it. Uh, but then I wanna build a, a tank for the Jack Dempsey's and, and some other Central Americans. Could be kind of a Central American tank and it's just, you know, it's gotta be bigger than 150 gallons so I'm looking at a, at a four by four 
tank, um, actually four by four by uh, 36, it'll be pretty beefy, probably about 300 gallons. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't really do a bog filter, you know, the, or I'm sorry, I can't do the, uh, yeah, the bog style filter, not bog style, <laughs> wetland style filter. If I said bog before, I meant wetland. Uh, I can't do the wetland because that's got to go behind there. It's got to be deep. You're going to be pumping the water all the way down, coming up through the substrate and everything, and then coming back into the aquarium. If I do that here, it pushes out too close to Predator Bay, and I like to keep big open aisleways here, at least four feet. Uh, I don't go for the, the cramped, you know, fish room sort of thing. Uh, I like the, the comfortable, lots of open space, plenty of room for my assistant to, uh, you know, jump around on the fish tank ledges and everything. So I think 300 should do it, and I think what I'll just have to do is build another bog style filter. And um, that's basically uh, kind of alluding to what I was talking about, or talking about at the beginning of the video as far as uh, things that are coming up is I'm going to be converting pretty much all of my freshwater filters to bog filters. Uh, I'm going to be adjusting where the ceramic media is. I'm still going to keep it. I'm just going to change it up some and then I'm going to add lights and uh, uh, floating plants or you know plants that are immersed uh, bringing uh, or taking in CO2 from the atmosphere and not just the water column. Uh, I'm finding great results with that. So what I've been doing is for the I have a 100 gallon stock tank behind the 3,000 gallon, and I, I drain it, pump it full of water for 3,000 gallon, test it, and then I see how fast it strips out all the nutrients, and uh, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it works really well. So, uh, and, I, and I've been running that test for six months, you know. So uh, that's the plan. I've already even ordered the plants already. They're on their way. So uh, yeah, going to be setting up that way. And I think uh, I'm going to have to save the wetlands filters for the basement annex. You know, once that gets built. Uh, those tanks will be much bigger. That room will be dedicated to tanks, nothing else. Uh, so that's going to be some crazy wetland filters. Something to look forward for, look forward to. But everything right now is going to be bog filters, um, which they're awesome. They work great. And of course, I got a lot going on with the 3,000 gallon. I'm working on building those new canopies because we're adding in all the plants that are going to be growing out of the water. They're also going to be immersed and lily pads and all that good stuff and new water flow and new tops and adjusted the lighting and yeah, you named it. And of course the 125. So I have some craziness going on with the 125 where it leaked, the, not, not the tank, but the, the sump was leaking pretty good. And then I put a canister filter on there to get that seated and then it stopped. It, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I've taken a bunch of video on that, and uh, obviously we'll cover that in the next video as well. We'll see what's going on. At this point, I don't even know what's going on, but, uh, and then of course, uh, I'm drawing up the plans for the new, you know, four by four tank over here, uh, which is definitely gonna be Central, uh, Central American, because it's gonna have electric blue Jack Dempsey in it, and friends. So, uh, thoughts on the 150 Riverbend tank? We'd love to hear it. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.